December meeting of the Finance Committee to order. Uh, Madam Clerk, may we have roll call, please? Bruce Paulson. Here. John Pettit. Here. Ron Kingsley. Here. Tom Bethany. Yeah. Stacey Hessel. Here. Patrick Cora. Okay, good. John, can you hear us? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> agenda has been published. Any comments on the meeting agenda? Yeah. Not public comments. Anybody, mem any member of the public that has a comment on something that's not on the agenda? Anything? All right, very good. Thank you. Next item of business is approval of the November min minutes. I move to approve. Okay, there's been a motion to approve and just a motion to second. Any discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Motion carried. All right, ambulance fees and billing discussion. Who has that? Well, we can start uh, with that. That was, uh, uh, there's some discussion about uh, getting that on the agenda from Mr. Kinsley. Um, so we put it on the agenda just to kind of go over where we're at with a couple of things. Um, you know, we've had some discussions in the past about, um, you know, the, the billing of um, out of county um, entities that we service. Uh, we've had some discussion about uh, the billing uh, company that we use. Uh, since we talked the last time, we've issued an RFP um, to procure um, or to test the waters on other billing companies. We've sent one to our current provider as well as about five others, four or five others, because um, I don't think we're getting uh, the service and getting the collections that we uh, could be getting with, with uh, better service on that end. So uh, that could be a game changer on some of the, the revenue that we're receiving. Um, we do have a large receivable balance. There's some older stuff in there that I don't think is being appropriately followed up on. Uh, so we'll see what other companies can do for us uh, in that regard. Um, did you have a specific... I, I forget exactly what the topic was that we discussed prior. Uh, make sure that we address that. Are we getting money from LCO? Well, there's no insurance. Um, I believe the chairman said that there was some kind of program that we still get some money. That, that's right. And Mike, you talked to Nate about that, right? Yeah, I thought Nate was going to be here today. <laughs> um, I don't know that I'm the best person to answer that question. I think we should maybe re put this on the agenda. I, I'm speculating a little bit. I get the impression from Nate, as far as when there's a service that goes out, you know, there's a number of days where you've got to make contact to, so we, I don't get the impression that that's a big problem. I don't, he doesn't seem too concerned about that aspect. Okay. But beyond that, I think we need Nate. That's fine, just want to make sure we can get all the money we can on it. So. Right. So what's the next steps? What what do you want to do? You want to put it back on the agenda and invite Nate, or how do you want to? We can do that because I think we'll have RFP responses. We can give you an update, you know, right. on, on where we're going with that as well. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah, you know, I kind of put it on the agenda because I know we had thoughts on it, but I didn't really follow up. I guess so. Okay. We'll do it again next. All right, Mr. So, so how do you you want collections, Tom? Are we are we collecting all of our bills or? No. Who and who's in charge of that? Well, the, the billing company, I mean, there's a there's a policy for collections. You know, they they bill within so many days, they send out the first letter, second letter, third letter. Uh, you know, if they get no response, then it goes to um, the Wisconsin debt collection, you know, if there's a driver's license or a social security number is needed to get it there. Uh, if they're out of state or we don't have that kind of information, then there's a collection agency that they use to um, pursue collections. So um, that's the theory, but I don't think those things happen in every case appropriately. 
do we have any influence with who they pick for collecting agencies or is that by statute or no not by statute so we um we have contracted with uh one in Wisconsin that they use and do they use one in Minnesota too? The company's based out of yeah. Minnesota. Yeah, I, I think Wisconsin debt collection does the majority of it. The other one then it's supposed to go to them, but they can't, it's out of the hibbing. The name SBC or something like that. Credit service. Uh, yeah. Credit service. Yeah. So how much do we write off a year? Do you have any idea? Is it a big, big idea? Yeah, I mean, we have reports that we, give to public safety on that. But the, uh, I mean, a, a lot of the write-offs are, you know, to, we bill this much, but we get this much in Medicaid and Medicare. So there's a huge, it's not a write-off, but a correction of the bills. And then uh, the true outstanding collections that are written off are, I don't have the number, but it's. Well, the amount, the receivable is, you know, two point. I don't know what it is now, 2.7, 2.8 million. But that includes a lot of what should be written off. Because like you said, when there's a claim and it's a Medicare claim, you know, we only get 35 or 40 percent. Well, that 60 percent should be written off, but it's never truly written off and reduced from the receivable. But it, it should be. And we'd ask them to clean that up so we can get some idea of what that number is. And they said they'd do it, but we haven't seen it yet. So that's a big item. Maybe we should keep that on the agenda and follow through on it and see if we can improve it. Yeah, right. Ms. Zilber, did you have a <laughs> comment? Ms. Zilber, 902 Holly Hill Lane, uh, Birchwood and Edgewater tax, uh, property taxpayer. Uh, I had submitted a public comment form for this agenda item. Uh, during the county's budget discussions, I had pre previously requested the county committee and or board talk about what has been billed to Washburn County Towns because Washburn County towns served by Sawyer County ambulance pay significantly less than our own towns. Well, and so I still have not received an answer to that. And I think that needs to be reevaluated. Um, and continuing, uh, Edgewater is not served by Sawyer County ambulance, but it's served by the Berkeley Four Corners Emergency Services District. And Edgewater pays into that entity for the service we get. And increasingly, um, um, you know, I, I know other committees have talked about the Sawyer County responses to certain incidents. Increasingly, RBFC is, the, is called to cover calls in media and excellent. So not only are Edgewater taxpayers paying for two ambulance services, one they get, one they don't, the, our service, which is extremely small, continues to be called out to serve where Sawyer County has not be able to, been able to respond. Um, regarding the question of the accounts receivable and writing it off, I believe that maybe this committee, when you put it on your next agenda, talk about looking at the financial side of ambulance collection, being that this is the finance committee, um, and maybe even making it a, a, a responsibility of this committee to approve the amounts that are being written off, maybe on a quarterly basis. My experience with the BFC ESD, um, beyond the fact that yes, for Medicare, Medicaid patients, uh, you can't collect the full amount, is that um, the ambulance billing service and collections were not able to collect for ambulance calls responding to out of state injured parties. So basically tourists come here, they get injured, and they are pri primarily the ones that are on, say, the other states equivalent of badger, badger care. And those other state programs are not paying when there is an ambulance charge in Wisconsin. So if this committee were to take a better look at that, you would understand what is reasonable in terms of collections, as well as understanding the impact of out of state parties who the county is not getting reimbursed for. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so, Mr. Duffy, you suggested we uh, put this on the January agenda for a more thorough discussion. Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> is that everybody okay with that? Yeah, and just to clarify a couple of things. Welcome, Nate. Glad to see you. Um, you know, we, we hear this misinformation every year from uh, public safety. Um, that area of the county is serviced by Sawyer County Ambulance Service. They elect 
to pay for another service because it is closer. That's fine. That is their option. Uh, we always get paged um, when there's a need in that area and respond, and they can address that more fully. But to say that Sawyer County doesn't serve that area is misinformation that uh, needs to be clarified. Yeah. Um, so Edgewater, um, of course, we work very well with Birchwood, number one. I know Vince down there very well, who is their ambulance director. Um, the biggest thing is where Edgewater is, yes, it's a geographical nightmare when it comes to where our stations are located. Um, when somebody calls Sawyer County dispatch, um, which most in Edgewater will get uh, for 911 coverage, right away what they do is they'll call Washburn County to get Birchwood Ambulance paged. That is their primary ambulance coverage. However, since we do provide a paramedic service, we will either run an ambulance or start moving an ambulance down there or use those medic cars that I'm sure everybody has seen. Um, now, with the EMTs, you know, they have to kind of play a game a little bit. They have to figure out if your patient needs the paramedic, you know, can they wait? Or are they going to start moving towards Rice Lake, which is mostly where most of the patients will go. So a lot of times we get canceled either five minutes away or whatnot by Birchwood ambulance personnel. And that is their decision. Um, I have arrived on scene in Edgewater uh, with them and I have rode with them like a lot of the paramedics have. Um, billings, when it comes to that, uh, only one ambulance service can bill. So normally what we do with intercepts is that Birchwood will charge the ALS rate. And then we get the difference, the ALS rate versus BLS. Normally they transport the patient, they'll get mileage, we'll just write it with. Um, we share the same billing company with Birchwood uh, currently. Um, when it comes to really diving down into our aging accounts, that is a better question with the billing company, the present billing company. I'm not a, a billing expert by any means. Um, and I would just like to remind people on the committee that we are currently have that RFP for a new billing company. And I think that closes in January, right, Mike? Yeah. Um, but they can explain more of like the aging accounts where you normally see that I've submitted with public safety. Um, my worry is when you look at your payer total at the ends, you know, the big numbers, right? Most insurances have that payer time you know, if we're out of the window or if we're not. And that's a question that I know Tom, myself, and Mike have all asked billing company, and they haven't been real receptive on giving us those answers. So hence why we put it out to RFP too. Um, out of state collections, we've gone back and forth on this. Um, as long, so our collections goes through Winnebago, uh, state debt or what's the program called, TRIP? The Wisconsin State, State Debt Collection. Right, uh, out of Winnebago County. Um, they processed that and they said that as long as we can get a social security number, they can run those. So our billing company after so many days um, of trying to get you know, payment, will then send them to state debt as long as we have a social. Now there are times when we can't get socials, you know, if they're unresponsive or we can't track them down. Um, a lot of that is more on your follow-up with the billing company. Billing companies normally will follow that up. Um, so we were told as long as they have a social security number in the state, state should be able to handle that. We do have an outside billing company besides the state where we do get charged a percentage uh, more than our state system. Um, and normally those will get pushed. You know, if we don't have socials, they can't find them or state debt can't collect. A lot of times those will get pushed on to the, the outside company. Um, yes, I, I don't think ever since I've been here, we've written anything off, correct? Well, not formally because the, the receivable balance is just maintained. It just sits there. It just sits there. It's never been reduced because of the, what we know is not collected. But we know there's 
uncollectible amounts in that number. Right. We just don't know how much. Shouldn't we be writing things off like that? I mean, that's normal practice, isn't it? Yeah, it's <laughs> it is. It's it's tracked independently of the financial system. It's not a receivable that sits on our books. Mm -hmm. But yes, we we okay. we're yeah. trying to pursue that. Well, given Nate's explanation, do we want to have a more formal presentation next month? Well, let's take a few questions now. Pardon me? Oh, well, let's take a few questions now. I don't have any. <laughs> I do. Oh, okay. Nate, can you explain? Um, I understand from the chairman of the county board that LCO pays X amount of dollars if there's no insurance or anything like that, if it's a tribal member. I don't know all the details, but. So what, and I'm going to take a stab at this. Uh, sorry. That's right. Um, from what I understand is that IHS, um, which is the tribal, you know, like LCO, um, they are a payer of last resort. Um, when I first started in 2017 under Mitch, um, there was a lot of talk at that time that LCO had a bit paying you know, or we weren't able to collect that. Um, when I started in this position in 18, we went, Mike, Keith and I both, we went out to LCO and spoke with their director at that time. Of course, it's changed over. Um, and we're like, you know, are we having this issue? Are we not? Um, her response was a lot of it is just their LCO members, you know, the people that go through them, just education was their biggest issue because they have a certain amount of time to, if they are LCO or IHS, they have a certain amount of time that they have to report that they went into the hospital. And I think it's a phone system that they do it on. Um, elders have longer than non-elders do. Um, and a lot of, there was a lot of issues and miscommunication on their side and they were working on that. So what we did is they have experts that, you know, that you can call and talk with that through. Um, we gave out cards, like here's the number. I know the hospital does the same thing. Um, but when we started asking, a lot of the members have Medicare, you know, they might be on Medicaid and if that, or they might have private insurance. And if that's the issue, IHS won't pay because IHS is the payer of last resort. Um, interesting about it though, is that they will pay hundred <laughs> percent. I don't get it. Um, looking at like this aging report, I think LCO is listed. And currently, if you looked at payer total, LCO is 9,900 bucks. So, you know, when I first started, it was like hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, that LCO is not paying. I don't see that. I've just followed up with Brian, the direct, you know, the company owner that we currently have. And I said, you know, are you guys having any issues? Uh, supposedly there had been prior to 2017 with some of the people that worked at the clinic. And they said, no, they haven't. And I've consistently heard that. Um, so that's my knowledge on, on LCO and IHS. Thank you. Is there any way we can track how many are being paid at all? That would be more of a question for Brian, which we can, I mean, we can reach out to him. Then I have another question regarding, um, is the billing company that we're using presently, do they get in all the information they need to bill within a reasonable long time? Yes, so normally what I do is I go daily. Um, when Ashley used to do it, Ashley Colson used to do it, um, it was may it may have been like two weeks, you know, she do it every two weeks. Uh, I do it daily. I like to go through the reports. Um, and I don't know if they know it or not, but we do have our billing bridge software that we pay for that they utilize. And I'll go into the admin part and then do like the background caches and pull it in. So it's all sitting in there. Now, if they have follow-up stuff that needs to be done, I mean, they can easily call the facilities, the hospitals or whatnot. Um, so I don't like the excuse of, hey, it's not dumping or, right. you know, the only time that normally we have a lot of reports to go through would be the weekend when I come in on Monday. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. No problem. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And what is the benefit of doing it externally with a billing company versus doing it internally? So first of all, 
there's not a lot of people up here, you know, and I'm not trying to be mean about that. There's not a lot of people that are ambulance coders or billing specialists. And our issue that we have is finding people that are good, number one. And number two, when they move on, you know, it, who do replaces them? And then, you know, we kind of had that internally. And then it was decided to go external because normally with the companies, they've got multiple coders, multiple billers to take over. Um, and so that was kind of a big thought process with it. Um, I just talked with Washera County, uh, Donaldson, I think is his last name, down in Washera is the ambulance director. They had internal, they had two billers. The company that they went with, it's a wash, like how much they were paying internal compared to what they pay external. Um, and our hope is too, is that with a bigger company, they can kind of, you know, go regionally and try to figure out, hey, what, what are other people charging? You know, what's that norm too? So then we don't get behind. So like normally annually every year for public safety, we go through, you know, these are the charges that are recommended, you guys approve, you know, and go through that process. And I, when we had, and then there's also just coding in general, um, a previous service that I worked for, we had a very nice lady that did internal billing, but currently they're on ICD-10 codes is what they call it. She was billing everything ICD-9. So we were missing out quite a bit. And when we went external, they got a lot more revenue. In. And of course, they're just being billing more appropriately. Um, so some of those things are kind of what we worry about. And there's a lot of like audit, you know, just to make sure you're staying up with Medicare and everything else. There's a lot of auditing processes. And I don't know where we would start with that. You know, coding for aim balance is a specific. My wife does coding for Mayo. Um, she has no idea. So just like finding somebody, you know, it, it's so hard, so tough. And I don't know if we want that to take that on. Okay. I just want to make sure because people asked why we were right. going with outside companies. And just one other thing too, like, you know, like in EMS as a paramedic, I was never taught anything billing ever. Like we just never talked about it. Patient asks, sorry, you'll have to talk with their billing person, you know? And so the nice thing hopefully is that the consulting. So like, you know, this committee wants to look at these reports better and everything else. Our hope is, is that we get a good consult, you know, consulting from our company that can come in and explain a lot of this stuff, you know? And that's the other thing that's nice with it. Okay, any, any more questions about ambulance? Is that enough? Do you want to put it back on the agenda for January to? Oh no, will they? see who we're going to go with in the future right so yeah that's all right would uh, would we have the uh the responses to the rfps by by the next committee meeting i remember i think it's the fourth yeah we i think we, it's the cutoff january 4th is the cutoff okay so then we can revisit this the do we want to look at receivables and write-offs or things like that at, at the next meeting I think so, okay. because that's a big part of our budget that we're sending out to the taxpayers. Yeah. Okay. Does that uh, with that limited conversation, I give you guys enough direction? Yeah, we've got. Yeah, so do we do we know what other counties what kind of luck they have? I mean, it's a big item. We can't. We know we're not going to collect all that we bill, but are we in the ballpark? And if we are, well, that's, that's it. We'll, we have to look at it at least. You know? Yeah, well, I, I think that's part of the problem is that we don't feel confident that the biller that we're using now is able to give us good service and accurate information. So, um, yeah, I mean, we talk with other agencies, um, you know, and, and we find out who they use, what kind of success they have. There is an industry norm on collections, and, um, you know, we don't even have a report that shows if we're in that norm or not so that's part of the yeah. problem yeah but it is an area that we can certainly improve upon yeah. so we should leave that on the agenda i think okay yeah all right madam clerk you've noted that i'm sure all right any more discussion about ambulance ambulance fees things or nate you want to stick around or you can leave if you want uh, if you don't need me i'll Take on. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm sure you don't want to hear about the budget watch list. Um, I'm sure I'm on it. <laughs>
Okay, uh, we want to hear him talk about you. All right, there. Mr. Keith, you want to lead us through the budget watch list? Sure. Um, so I just, for this meeting, included the revenues. I took the expenditure section off of this um, because the excitement this year really is on the revenue side. 2021 has been a year fiscally like I've not never seen before. Um, That's good or bad? It's good. Oh. Um, speaking <clears throat> specifically of the general fund, we have had revenue increases that have been phenomenal, and it's not just been in one or two areas. It's been pretty well across the board in the general fund. Um, so I just put some of the items here where you can see um, where we're at. This is current probably as of a week ago or so. Um, if you look at the variance column, the items that are in brackets, that's that's a favorable, that's good. Um, you know, just going down the list, obviously the big ones we talked about, sales tax, we're already $250,000 to the good, and we still got two months to collect. November and I mean December and then January will come back into the 2021 budget. Um, timber has been good. I I don't know, but I would assume there's going to be more deposits in December here. Right. Well, they've got about two hundred thousand, I think, additional billings and billings to come. Yeah. So, that, that's basically what Greg said yesterday, wasn't it? Yes, two hundred thousand. Yeah. So we'll see the timing of that because we will have to cut off. Right. Uh, yeah. but that's you know that's good. Registered deeds has been good with collections. Zoning has been good with collections. Uh, just the ta tax deed sales has been outstanding this year. Just the properties that were mm -hmm. put up for right. sale. Stand up, take a bow. Hi, right. Ambulance is on here uh, right now. It's about $260,000 behind budget, which surprises me. Um, I didn't anticipate that happening this year. I thought the trend was going in an upward direction there. And now all of a sudden, the last few months, it's stumbled a little bit. So um, not sure why. I know they've had some staffing problems with the billing company too, and maybe that's part of it. Uh, the Board of Prisoner line item, most of the revenues that we're seeing are not COVID related dollars. It's not ARPA, it's not stimulus kind of stuff. It's just other stuff, except for in this Board of Prisoners line item, there's $137,000 excess. There is COVID money in that one particular line item because they're holding prisoners here longer and getting paid by the state because of COVID for that purpose. So there is some COVID money there. But otherwise, it's not COVID related, direct COVID related, I should say, money. So, so I put this on the agenda ahead of the next uh, agenda item because I wanted to lead into our discussion on agenda item 10. So, if you add up the variance column, how much, what would be the number? Well, um, I don't know on this, but I can say the general fund right now has an excess of a little over $3 million. How much? $3 million. Three. Yeah. And I, I anticipate that probably between now and the end of the year when we start reconciling the books, I anticipate that to come up a little bit because that's what happens every year when you start reconciling and recording receivables, you know, that haven't come in yet. We generally tend to increase at, at this time a year ago. General fund excess was about seven hundred and fifty thousand. Okay. And then by the time we reconciled books, it went up to about one point four. That's a so, significant jump. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, and like I say, you know, there's there's still two months of sales tax to come in, so there's probably. Even if we get 150,000 a month, there's another 300,000 coming in. Ambulance, we're collecting into February. There should be another 
two or three hundred thousand there coming in. I mean, there's just certain areas that you know, right. the LCO money we haven't seen yet. So there's still more money to come in. So I, I anticipate the excess to just go up from where we're at now. So unexpected, unusual, but it's a good thing. So leading into number 10, then it is, okay, now what do we do? It really presents a good opportunity for us to start looking at where are some of our trouble spots countywide in our budgets and what can we do to help facilitate some of those as we go forward to just kind of strengthen our overall position. And so if we, if, unless there's questions on Agenda item nine, I'd like to lead into agenda item 10 if I can. Please go ahead. Okay. Away. So, um, in the general fund, you know, there's different fund balance designations, but the one we probably watch the closest is the unassigned fund balance. And, you know, we have a policy that says we have a range that we like to uh, stay within. The upper limit of that range is 33%. And basically what it is, is 33% of whatever your general fund expenditures are, we want to, at the upper limit, that's what we want to maintain in unassigned general fund balance. And that, at that 33%, that amount is plus or minus, it's about 4.7 million. So I, I would suggest as we close out the year and we're reconciling the accounts that we try to set our unassigned for 2021 at that limit. Um, and then look for opportunities to make designations for other items that we know are going to be trouble spots to transfer out of the unassigned and put them into an assigned designation for specific future purchase purposes. I don't know if that makes sense the way yeah, I it makes sense. So, so for example, um, we know with human services, we talked about their out of county placements and the strain that that's been putting on our budget now and what we're projecting going forward until something changes. So one of the recommendations I would make is let's take some of that excess money that we have and designate it as an assigned fund balance for the next year or two if we can so if we in fact do run into those financial problems we can fall back on that money to kind of fill the gap at that time it's one example right um, that was what 1.2 million dollar issue this year annually yes right. and and we you know that's just an estimate too it just depends on how many people are actually you know run through that program but that's that's been the budget number we've been relying on yes okay. right so at least it'd be nice if we could set aside a year or two into the future to relieve a little bit of the pressure while there's somebody trying to determine how we can fix that program. Another, another example might be, you know, I've heard a couple of times mentioned that either committees or county board that, you know, the senior, no, the resource development fund is, um, the fund balance there has been depleting over substantially. Yeah. yeah. Maybe this is an opportunity to backfill that a little bit for future dam projects. Don't we have a policy that says any forestry revenue over X dollars would go into the resource development fund? I know there was a policy. Yeah. Um, but I don't think we ever changed that policy. I don't recall ever changing the board voting to change that policy. I don't know. And I, I, I know there's a fund balance policy out there for the different funds. Mm -hmm. I don't remember if that's the policy that was in place when I got here or if we changed it to that. I don't remember. But, but I, don't I think it was prior to your arriving that we, that we set that policy when the accounting standards board or whatever it was came up with the de designation of fund balance. Right. That I agree with. I, I, I 
Yes, I remember that. But then we looked at the fund balance policy back in 2016, maybe. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember if we changed it at that time. But that would have to go to the board to be changed, correct? Yeah. I don't ever recall us changing the forestry. Well, as part of the fund balance policy. Yeah. I, when that was changed, yeah. I know we talked about it back then because we were struggling. Right. No, yeah. I know we were. And it might be we put together another plan that just kind of overrode it too, because as things change, the person right. doesn't know what the past was and you have new people coming in. That's very common. It is, but the, it's a policy and it should have gone to the board for approval. I'm not sure if they ever did. I don't recall it. Yeah. Well, we, we can review it again. Sir. Okay. Um, or, you, you know, we could reduce taxes too. Right. I mean, we have, there are options and, and maybe there's some combination of those items. Um, but I, I do think it's an opportunity to look at some trouble spots um, and, and try and cover our basis of going into the future. We have a plan in place to, to help alleviate right. some of what we believe is kind of- So is this a, just to lead up to a more thorough discussion in January? That's just what I was going to ask. Can you present your plan in January that we could vote on or move forward with? Yeah. So today was meant to be a discussion to bring it forward. Um, in talking with Tom, you know, the, the, the year's not closed <laughs> out yet. Usually by the end of January, I have a pretty good feel for where the um, budgets are going to end up for the year. There's always some changes, but things are pretty well set. We have a pretty good idea how things are going to end up. So that's why we didn't bring it today. We just, the year hasn't even closed out yet. We thought we'd wait till the year closed out. But we, I can certainly come back in January um, with some resolutions to look at for specific items and, and we'll have a good idea where the, the numbers are for the year. I had the idea of being proactive instead of reactive. It felt, and I'm new, so I apologize, but I felt like we were reactive this year, in my opinion, but that's only because I didn't know what prep you guys had before I got on the board. So it's just nice to show that we're concerned going forward. That's, so good job. The, have you checked with the auditors? Do we do have to, as a, have to have the designations before year end, or can we no, designate I, after? We, we can designate after. Okay. I've got an email because I've asked her that question in the past. Okay. There is a there is a difference in designations. Right. So my suggestion was to set it up as an assigned uh, fund balance designation. Um, what that means is it, you, you take a resolution to the county board, county board approves the assigned designation. That designation can be changed right. without having to go back to county board. So let's say we decide we're going to assign fund balance to buy five vehicles next year. Now next year comes something happens and we say, no, we don't want to use that for the five vehicles. We need a new HVAC system. So let's redirect the money to the HVAC system. You can do that without having to go back to county board versus you can designate it as committed fund balance. So you go to county board with a committed resolution and says, we want to use it for the five vehicles. Now when that HVAC system comes in, you have to go back with another resolution that right. says, we don't want to use it for the vehicles, we want to use it for the right. HVAC system. Well, I would think even if you, the first one you talked about, you'd probably want to run by the finance committee. Yeah, to change the absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so yeah, we can do that. We'll come back in January. Okay. Um, and you know, Tom and I can uh, talk about what we think some of the trouble spots are and, and make our recommendations. But do you have recommendations sure. there, or yeah, I mean, I guess I wouldn't ignore reducing property taxes as part of the discussion. That gets. Tricky though, if you reduce property taxes below the levy, then you're locked in at a lower rate right. forever, which is right. kind of what got us into the problem to begin with. I know. Yeah. And it's like I say, this is 
unforeseen. I mean, we kind of had an inkling that sales tax was going to keep going, but not certainly not the rest of the budgets. Um, and looking forward into future budgets, even though we know what happened in 2021 fiscally, I, I wouldn't want to make drastic changes relying on that information <laughs> in the future at this time. No, I understand. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, have you exhausted item 10 now, or you want to talk some more about it? I think we're good unless you have questions. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. One comment, please. Go ahead. Um, if we start looking at like probably helping, helping him with services, because we know it's going to be lack of funds there. Maybe we should be looking at the ambulance service too, because that's out of the county, it's out of the levy limits, but they, we could reduce that number somewhat mm -hmm. potentially. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And that would be a better way to lower the tax rate. That's what I mean. That's right. Well, that's, hand in hand. that's kind of what I was saying. But yeah. yeah. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. All right. Agenda item number 12, unless we want, excuse me, number 10. 11. 11. 11. There we go. I got, had it bracketed. Okay. Do you want to take this, Tom or, or Mike? Yeah. The, uh, the resolution in number 11. Um, is the documentation that we've been using for uh, the use of the ARPA fund. So within the budget, uh, the county board um, authorized the uh, Hayward Lakes um, Visitors Bureau contribution of 40,000. Um, but then we had Sherry from the Visitors Bureau um, write up the use of those funds to make sure that the use, their planned usage um, meets the requirements of uh, the ARPA uh, rules and regulations so they are eligible funds so this uh, provides us then with the documentation that uh, uh, that money does qualify and, and is going to be used for that purpose and we've done that with the broadband and with the um, sure. scanner yeah the, the body scanner and we'll do that for other um, issues as well so um, just a documentation formality actually uh, i mean since this has been approved by the county board i mean it, it wouldn't go back to the have to go back to the board. Would it? I, I think we would want to have the, the resolution approved by the board just so that we have documentation for you know a future audit of ARPA funds. It's all been board approved. I think okay. we'd be better served. All right. So it's a yes. But we didn't do that with the broadband or the sheriff's department. No, we did. Yes. We did. Yeah. And Those... I remember voting. I don't remember seeing this on either of those two. Yeah. Okay. It's attached to the sheriff's. Department. Let me just wait and see if the committee has any more. So any more discussion on that before we recognize Ms. Zilmer? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Paulson. Linda Zilmer, I brought her faculty taxpayer. And my public comment was to ask that this committee do, does not approve the ARPA resolution. And there's been a lot of good discussion about, you know, the situation in the county in the past and some recommendations going forward and three million dollar unexpected favorable results and during the budget process i had mentioned that the budget exhibits that the county board considered at least what the public could see did not include any year to date or projected fiscal year in 2021 numbers so a lot of the budget discussion that the public observed did not include the possibility of having using being able to use fund balance should the county board decide to fund the HLVCB. And I don't think that using the ARPA funds at this point is probably the best, as well as the um, you know, the situation. Um, in, in my public comment that I've submitted that's written, what I'm asking for is for the county to prepare before next week's county board meeting an analysis of the last three um, years of how room taxes have been spent uh, now that it's available on the, the DO, Department of Revenue website and also the financial statements that the HLVCB has submitted in support of their request. Um, because uh, it's 
you know, tying into, and I'll just, my comment for the next item is that I do support the resolution for the uh, Visitors and Convention Bureau to forego or rescind their um, request for money in 2022 because of all the other ones that they've collected. But I, I really think a history of, of looking at, especially the resource development funds in the past that have been depleted, a lot of times the county board has elected to use funds from either the environmental impact fees or the resource development fund to fund the DCB, I believe. And if anyone watches yesterday's committee meeting of the land and water conservation uh, meeting, there is a possibility of doing a dam re uh, repair or replacement that would exceed what has been, I believe, approved so far. And really, money could be spent to take care of infrastructure versus marketing. Thank you. So the the recommendation then is to just one second. Yep, I'm just waiting. Uh, the recommendation from the staff is to approve this and forward it on to the county board. Just to, this is more of a dot your I's, cross your T's process. Correct, in accordance with uh, what the board already approved in right. the budget process. Okay, this has. I make a motion to approve the resolution um, of the ARPA spending to HLVCB. And pass it on to the county. And pass it on to the county board. Very good. Second. And I'll second the motion. Okay, motion has been made and seconded to approve the. Uh, the resolution of using ARPA funds for to fund the visitors convention bureau. Any more discussion? Yes, sir. Um, I believe it was last year when we were doing the budget. Didn't we put together a resolution stating that uh, they were the visitors bureau would be cut their uh, funding? Do we call that? That was a 2017 resolution, yeah. I believe. Right. Right. So yeah, that, that started the process of working to get more right. towns to enact room tax. Right. So it was cut. It just the ARPA funds make up the difference. So their budget was cut. It just it makes. I mean, you have to use the ARPA funds for what their intended purpose are. They received fifty thousand, the same as they did the year before. Right, and the year before that. So yeah. they. I mean, the intent really was to for the board to assist the convention bureau to go out to the towns and uh, you know and i guess state the facts about room tax and i did that yes. you know i did that yeah. with the town of round lake and the town of Baston. but from the county board they only got ten thousand. it's just that if the arpa funds wouldn't have been there they would have just gotten the ten thousand. we're just using the arpa funds as they're appropriated right no i understand the ins and outs no, I know. I just I was making the point clearer that yes, they only would have gotten ten thousand dollars if the ARPA funds weren't be available. That may be the way you see it. It's not the way I see it, and that's okay. Yeah, it is okay. Nothing wrong with good corporate debate. Okay. All right. Uh, we have a motion on the floor to approve this resolution and pass it on to the county board. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. 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 All right. Did you, you're voting aye or nay? Let's, let's do a roll call on this, please, Ms. Madam Clerk. But this has already been approved by that full board. I don't get it. No, Mr. Paulson. No. John Pettit? No. Ryan Kinsley? Yes. Tom Duffy? Yes. Casey Yes. All right, motion passes. It will go on to the county board agenda. Okay, the next item of business is the more controversial on the agenda, but uh, a resolution to ask the Visitors and Convention Bureau based on uh, getting 140, 150,000 of unbudgeted revenues to forego uh, getting the additional 40,000 from the county. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Um, did Rebecca write up this resolution or who wrote up this resolution? I don't know. I'll have to turn to Mr. Hawk for Mr. Yeah, the information was supplied uh, by a board member. And I, did you format it? Okay. Yeah, I 
pretty much just took word for word what was provided. Because as I read it, it's like we're punishing them for raising money. So are we going to punish every, like the library or the other entities if they raise money, the sheriff's department, they have a lot of people that donate. So it looks like we're punishing them for doing a good job is what it looks like, like saying, well, here's a piece of candy, but we're going to take it back because you're, we don't want to reward you for doing a good job. I, that's what I read when I see this resolution. I read it differently that, uh, that's you, you know, we've it. got taxpayer funds and that now that one of the outside <laughs> agencies has additional revenue, uh, why use taxpayer money? To, uh, to fund something that probably isn't needed at th this year. It's always needed. We're a tourism industry. Pardon me? It's always needed. We're a tourism industry. They go to 13 We, we are, but what's more important? I mean, you're on the school board. And what's yes. more important? To have mm -hmm. every student have access to high-speed internet or do more promotion for tourism? Or uh, is it more important to build more workforce housing or do promotions for tourism. In my mind, uh, it, the tangible things are more important than what I view as intangible. I'm not against the visitor convention group. As I said before, I went out and tried to sell the room tax to the county, to the towns in the county. It's just, what's the best use of taxpayer money? I mean, this is the discussion we should have all the time is you've got different groups advocating that the need for money and then this board should, needs to decide which is the highest priority. So then in that circumstance, we should just go with the, with the statute for the library then and not give them that additional money each year. If that's the board's choice, yes, right. certainly the board can make that decision. Well, it seems like then we should have a resolution to rescind what we gave them. If we're gonna keep doing resolutions, we're setting precedent to say, we're gonna give you this money, but we're gonna ask you to, to decline it. I just think that you're setting precedence for every agency that gets money. And if somebody doesn't agree with that, they're getting the money then they're gonna write a resolution and you're gonna be wasting our administration's time. The, uh, the difference here in my mind is that Visitor and Convention Bureau, right after the budget was passed, got, uh, I bought 140, $150,000 of unbudgeted revenue. Because they worked their butt off and wrote a grant for it. So if we want to write grants, if every agency wants to write grants, they're welcome to do that and they can get extra money. So you're saying that you would rather them not write grants and get the extra money and depend on taxpayers. All of the money that they get are, is taxpayer dollars. All the money that all of our agencies get are taxpayer dollars. So yes, to be respectful of that, you bring up the school board. If we don't have people that live in our community, we have no students. So we have to look at what is bringing people here. And if our if our tourism industry is not bringing people here, or we don't have good facilities of manufacturing, it's because people don't want to live here, and then we have no community. So then we have no school. So our school is our strongest asset. Next in line is the hospitals. But people are coming here because they once visited here because they were tourists. I'm, I'm just I'm just feeling like we're wasting the administration's time by, and then asking or slapping them in the face by doing a good job and saying, we're going to give you this money, but we ask that you decline it. And then what is the repercussions if they don't decline it? Do they look like the bad people or is that what you're saying? So we presented this to them. What if the board says, no, we, we, we aren't going to sign this. No, we're not going to. We still want the $40,000 ARPA funds. What is the repercussions? Well, then? everything we do has optics. So, you know, that's, I guess, the individual's opinion on what's the repercussion. Yes, Ms. Pettit. It is obviously clear, Ms. Tessel is on one side of what she believes, what she does, believes, and we have other opinions just like she's allowed hers. Um, Hayward Lakes ha ha has had knowledge for years now that we it has been in a board meeting, as Mr. Kinsley had said, that we were intending, it was not intended to continue to fund Hayward Lakes for years, where we were trying to go for the the taxes, the room, the and we went to Round Lake, we went to many of the towns and said, this is the way we need to go to reduce us funding them. 
and um, they continually get outside sources and it's not punishing them it's we're trying to reduce what the taxpayers are having to give them the schools the hospitals the libraries are for the children and for the residents that live here yes we are a tourism industry but that's not solely what we are we are not solely based on that and there are many people that live here that then go to florida and have second homes here or live in florida and come here and purchase second second homes but it's many of the residents, it's the relatives at the cabins and everything still say, stay. This year we had 1500 people come in and buy due to the probably the pandemic and that not being able to get in for the camp, the camping grounds. Um, they couldn't get into Canada. So our sales tax went up. That's why we have the additional, but we need to pull back and, and we have to figure out, we don't have the money, we're, we're borrowing money we we got we have to figure out we need to fund programs where the county has been cut and we're at like an hhs we're not to full speed there's many departments that are not full speed and they need the funding and we can't take arpa for that but we have to figure out what we're going to do but even if they decline the arpa funds we still have arpa funds to use and they only get ten thousand dollars so it's a new point I mean, we're, we're just asking to use the ARPA funds what, for what they're intended. And that, that's what we were supposed to do in all of the committee meetings was find uh, a reason or an, a figure out a solution that was a solution that was brought forth. Now you're saying that that was a bad solution and you want them to rescind their money. We're asking them to, but I mean, the ARPA funds can be used in a different a number of different ways. Do we want to use ARPA funds to promote tourism and I think that's kind of a squishy number because I don't think there's any tangible for every dollar you spend you get this many dollars back I've heard some one dollar for eight dollar but I think that is really produced by the, the industry um, so now we've got ARPA funds we can spend them on broadband high-speed internet bringing high-speed internet to everybody in the county We've got ARPA funds, we can use that to build workforce housing so our people have a, a good place to live. So the high hospital can recruit people and they have a place to live. So the schools can recruit, recruit teachers and they have a place to live. So I mean, it's, to me, it's not punishing anybody. It's allocating ARPA funds to a more tangible use. So I guess we're discussing something without a resolution. Is there a, without a motion, sorry. Okay, does somebody want to make a motion? A, I'll make the motion. A? On this, pardon me? She said she'd make the motion. I'll make the motion. Okay, you're making a motion to what? From your design. No, you're still muted. Ms. Pettit, are you, can you hear us? Yes, somebody's phone's ringing. Okay, good. I mean, do you want to make a resolution in favor? I mean, in, favor. in favor. In favor of the motion. Um, we need you. Okay. Can we defer for a second until we get our other committee member back? In the meeting? No, we'll just wait, I guess. We can pay the same, I guess it's all right. Pardon me? We can pay the same, I guess it's all right. <laughs> Mr. Duffy, Ms. Pettit made a motion to approve uh, this resolution and pass it on to the county board. And now we're waiting for a second for some action on this. But the, the resolution she's 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 asking for proposing is what we're asking the the visitors right. bureau to reconsider. To right. deny it. So it's an optional thing. Right. Yeah, yeah. it's to deny. It's pretty straightforward. Is to forego receiving the funds. Yeah. The request to the forego. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do we have a second on this motion? I'll second it. Okay, any more discussion? Okay. Roll call vote. 
Yeah, I think we should have a roll call vote. Good choice. Mr. Paulson? Uh, yes. Ms. Pettit? Yes. Mr. Kinsey? No. Mr. Duffy? No. Ms. Hessel? Absolutely not. <laughs> What they absolutely not noted. I would like that absolutely not noted. Okay, good. Okay, motion fails. All right, where are we now? I think one thing we have to be sure is that the visitors be able to realize is that in the future, this is going to be uh, our contribution is going to stop. I think uh, that they've been made very clear by think, our actions yeah. this year. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not only actions of this year. This has been going on since 2017. They've been well aware of this. This has been, and every year this is something that happens and it ends up in a big disagreement and no one's happy. And we're trying to figure out how we fund other things with ARPA that are, are as Mr. Paulson said, that are more tangible at this time. Yes, there needs to be uh, advertisement, marketing, but there also is issues with it that it also your county is not being marketed as the Hayward area is. And that is part of the contention with the money being donated to Hayward Lakes. All right, do you have a question? Comment? This is our ARPA fund. So we need to ever get the final list of what qualifies and what does not qualify. It's like 43 pages. Is it done? <laughs> The final rules? No, just what the interim rules. Yeah, are the, the final interim. rules. Yeah, we don't knock <laughs> down the fourth. Okay. Can we move on to item 13? Do you have any future items or anything for the good of the cause? The ambulance service. I mean, the ambulance service will have that on there again. Right. Yeah. I was assuming that that was clerk and had noted that. Yes, Ms. Hess. Could we put on there um, ARPA uses? maybe discuss what we could use the ARPA uses for. And so then it's not that you are using it. I mean, you're, you're right, correct in saying that they should be appropriated to housing for things like that, but we have had no direct conversation of what specifically the needs are. Uh, no, I think that's a, uh, a valid request. I mean, I have been after us to set priorities on where to spend the ARPA funds. We, we haven't done that yet, I think primar primarily because of the, I'm going to call it ambiguity of the interim rules, or are they still ambiguous? Not ambiguous. Uh, I think there's going to be more clarification. I don't see them changing significantly. So yeah, okay. I mean, we do need a process of, of prioritizing and, and using those funds. And now that we're past right. the budget, I think that's yeah. what we move into because we'll have not only ARPA funds to use, we'll have opioid dollars to use. Um, so we've got uh, a few different pots of money. The infrastructure uh, package, we have no idea how that's going to trickle down to counties. So there is other funding opportunities that we'll have to, uh, to look at and right. use. So having said that, Ian, what's your recommendation then for the January meeting? Can we talk about our, our yeah, sons? Yeah, absolutely. The categories. Yeah, and, and hopefully we'll have final rules by then. Oh, I've heard that before. Yeah, me too. <laughs> right. Okay. Can we, Tom, can we get that all forwarded to us again once everything is uh, settled or the changes are made so we can all review it again before the meeting? Yes. It's what? How many pages of the interim rules? There's, 43. Yeah, it's 43. There's, uh, yeah, the opioid uh, documentation came out last week too. There's an exhibit that uh, outlines another, I don't know how many pages that is of, of things for the opioid money. Um, then when we get the final rules, we'll get that out as well. Okay. Well, could you get can condense it down so that we don't have to go through? No. no. <laughs> There's not a close notes version of it anywhere. I tried to find it. There's a there's a one pager and there's a 43 pager. <laughs> Can't talk to you as a 10 pager then. So All right. right. Him, you have to talk to him. Any uh any more discussion or any yet of the course? Not? Yes, ma'am. I'm on you're on item 14. I don't want to jump the gun here. Oh no, no, go ahead. <laughs> um, this is my committee of jurisdiction. The past 23 years changed a couple of times along the road. This is my final meeting. I want to thank you all, and I hope you show the same fairness to our new treasurer once they are determined. Good. Well, thank, thank you. you very much for your thank you. Thank you. Part of on a good note. <laughs>
producing an extra 40, 400,000 for the county. <laughs> what do you plan to do with your, with your retirement? Oh. To do some traveling, yeah. spend time with my family, and clean my house. <laughs> oh, you mean Jeff doesn't do that? Yeah. Oh, that's so, so <laughs> surprising. Thank you all for all Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, you're up, Jeremy. Thanks.